The story unfolds within the ominous depths of a pitch-black dungeon, its walls damp and cold, casting an eerie chill in the air. Two guards with sleek, serpent-like tails stand vigil at the entrance, their sharp eyes ever watchful. This is no ordinary dungeon. It is the fabled lair of the Silver Dragon, its secrets whispered only in legend. Beyond the heavy iron-barred door, an unknown figure lies shackled in thick, rusted chains, motionless, as if time itself has forgotten them. Suddenly, the stillness is shattered. The soft, radiant glow of footsteps approaches, their light a stark contrast to the surrounding darkness. Each step is graceful, almost ethereal, as though the very presence of this visitor draws the shadows back. The atmosphere shifts, charged with a sense of impending revelation, as the mysterious figure descends further into the heart of the dungeon. The two guards, stationed rigidly before the occupied cell, were stirred by the sound of approaching footsteps. One of them, ears finely attuned to the cadence, instantly recognized the soft yet commanding rhythm. It was Her Majesty. The realization swept over him like a chill, and with a quick glance to his fellow, they both turned in perfect unison. Their eyes met the sight of the queen herself, descending toward them with an air of quiet authority. Both guards moved with precision, placing a hand over their chests in a gesture of loyalty and reverence. Before them stood the queen, her long, silver-white hair cascading down her back in silken waves, shimmering faintly even in the dim light of the dungeon. Her regal presence was undeniable, every movement elegant, every glance sharp. Without hesitation, her voice rang out, calm yet imperious, cutting through the stillness of the chamber. Leave your post, she commanded, her tone brooking no argument. I will speak with the prisoner alone. The guards exchanged a brief look before bowing deeply, retreating from the cell, to grant the queen her solitude with the one held captive behind the iron bars. The striking silver-haired woman, none other than the renowned silver dragon queen, Rosweisa, stepped gracefully into the dungeon cell. Her regal bearing was unmistakable, with her arms crossed lightly over her chest, exuding an air of authority. As she stood before the prisoner, her piercing gaze settled upon them, sharp and unyielding. A faint smile, tinged with amusement, played at the corners of her lips, hinting at thoughts she kept concealed behind her calm, composed demeanor. She extended her arms gracefully, casting her gaze downward with a pleasant smile etched across her face. Her eyes gleamed with a mix of satisfaction and curiosity as she regarded the prisoner, the once great dragon-slaying hero. With a voice both regal and laced with mockery, she asked, Tell me, how does it feel to now be a prisoner of our dragon clan? The man chained within the cold, dimly lit cell was no ordinary prisoner. He was the legendary hero of mankind, a figure once celebrated for his valor in the long, bitter war against the dragons. For years, he had been their sworn enemy, a symbol of hope to humans and a threat to the ancient dragon clans. Now, he sat shackled and defeated, his defiant spirit still burning in his eyes. Though the queen stood before him, her question lingering in the air, he had no desire for idle conversation. His silence was deliberate, a refusal to indulge in her twisted game. Instead, his sharp, piercing gaze locked onto hers, unyielding. Spare me your words, he growled, his voice low and edged with bitterness. If you're going to kill me, do it quickly. His tone was cold, resolute, every word a challenge to the queen's authority, though his fate seemed sealed. The queen's smile deepened as she lightly touched her lips, her gaze never wavering from the hero's defiant eyes. Oh, you wish for a quick death, she mused, her voice dripping with amusement. The request from the strongest hero of mankind seemed to delight her, the moment stretching out as if she were savoring every second of his desperation. But the queen had no intention of granting him such mercy. Her enjoyment came not from ending lives swiftly, but from drawing out the suffering of her enemies, especially this one. The hero's torment was something she relished, and she had no plans to let him escape his fate so easily. 
the queen stepped closer to the hero, her presence dominating the small, dim cell. Her face drew nearer, now just inches from his, the tension palpable between them. With a slow, deliberate motion, she placed her hand beneath his chin, lifting his head so their eyes met at the same level. As her gaze roamed over his face, she couldn't help but notice the sharp angles of his features, the rugged handsomeness that remained despite his captivity. A flicker of admiration crossed her mind, acknowledging his unyielding resolve, even in chains. With a sudden flick of her thumb, the queen's long, sharp nails raked across the hero's face, biting into his skin. Blood began to well up from the fresh cuts on his cheek, a crimson contrast against his pale skin. Smirking, she leaned in closer, her voice dripping with cruel amusement. A few more scratches, and you might look even more handsome, she taunted, her eyes gleaming with sadistic satisfaction as she watched the blood trickle down his face. The hero gritted his teeth against the sharp sting of pain, his jaw tightening. His eyes drifted downward, catching sight of the fresh blood trailing from his wounded cheeks and dripping onto the queen's long, blood-stained nails. The crimson droplets stood out starkly against her pale fingers, a vivid reminder of his vulnerability in her grasp. The hero jerked his head away from the queen's grasp, his jaw clenched in fury as he broke free of her cruel touch. His eyes burned with anger, and his voice, sharp with frustration, cut through the silence. Stop humiliating me, he growled. If you're going to kill me or tear me apart, then do it, but end it quickly. His words hung in the air, but the Dragon Queen only watched him with an unsettling calm. Her lips curled into a slow, amused smile at his defiance. As she studied him, her silver tail swayed gracefully behind her, the metallic sheen catching the low light of the dungeon. She found a twisted delight in his desperation, savoring his suffering like a cat playing with its prey. The queen languidly licked the fresh blood from her thumb, savoring the metallic taste as she kept her gaze locked on the hero. Her eyes glinted with a seductive allure, each word dripping with honeyed mockery. As formidable as you are, she purred, if you hadn't been betrayed by that villain, you might not have ended up in such a dire predicament. She tilted her head slightly, her smile widening as she continued. Perhaps, instead of clinging to your shattered pride, you might consider joining the Silver Dragon Clan. Her tone was both tantalizing and patronizing, the suggestion a twisted offer cloaked in mock sympathy, inviting him to abandon his feudal defiance for an alternative that, to her, seemed almost more torturous. Upon hearing her words, a wry smile curved the hero's lips as he watched her slowly lick the blood from her thumb. His eyes, gleaming with a mix of defiance and curiosity, fixed on her. Do you even consider yourself worthy? He asked, his voice laced with challenge and disdain. Her eyes narrowed dangerously as his mocking words sank in, the flicker of amusement in his smile igniting her fury. She became acutely sensitive to his challenge, her pride stung by his defiance. In an instant, her expression hardened, and with a swift, fluid motion, she lashed out. Her silver tail sliced through the air like a whip, striking the hero with brutal force. A deafening bang echoed through the hollow dungeon as the hero's body was hurled backward, slamming into the stone wall behind him. The impact sent cracks splintering through the ancient stone, and a cloud of dust and debris filled the room, briefly obscuring him from view. He lay buried beneath the rubble, the weight of the Dragon Queen's rage pressing down as heavily as the stones themselves. As the dust slowly settled, a jagged crack spidered across the wall behind the hero, evidence of the sheer force of the Queen's strike. He lay crumpled beneath the debris, his chest heaving as he struggled for breath. Blood dripped from the corner of his mouth, each cough sending fresh splatters onto the cold stone floor. Paralyzed by the brutal impact, his body refused to respond, the weight of her lethal attack leaving him broken and helpless. The queen slammed her foot down onto the hero's chest with merciless force, the sharp impact jolting his body awake from its dazed state. His eyes flew open, wide with shock and pain, as the crushing weight pressed down on him, stealing what little breath he had left. Her eyes burned with fury, her voice seething as she leaned over him. 
How dare a mere prisoner show such disrespect to me? She hissed, her words dripping with venom as her dominance bore down on him, both physically and with her unyielding presence. The queen crossed her arms, her piercing gaze locking onto the hero's eyes as she spoke his name with cold authority, Leon Cosmode. Her foot remained planted firmly on his chest, pinning him beneath her as she leaned in, her voice dripping with mockery. Do you truly still believe you're the great hero of mankind, adored by thousands? She sneered, her tone laced with cruelty. Are you still clinging to the fantasy of wiping out the Dragon Clan and leaving your name in history as a legend? Each word was a deliberate taunt, designed to strip away any remaining shreds of his pride. She tilted her head slightly, a cruel smile playing on her lips as she looked down at him. You should wake up she suggested with mocking sweetness. Otherwise, you'll die here like a foolish, self-righteous loser, clinging to a hopeless dream. Her words cut deep, laced with the cold certainty of someone who already believed his fate was sealed. She pressed her foot down harder on Leon's chest, her gaze cold and unrelenting. Perhaps, she mused, her voice dripping with false sympathy. Just maybe, you could have given your descendants a chance to bask in wealth and glory alongside you. Her words were a twisted reminder of the future he could no longer claim. Leon gritted his teeth, his body trembling beneath the crushing weight of her foot, each breath becoming a painful struggle against her unyielding force. She gazed down at him with a cold, satisfied expression. Such a future won't come to pass, she said with cruel certainty. Unfortunately for you, there's no successor to carry on your name. You'll never see that day. Her words were sharp, meant to cut deep. But Leon, despite the pain coursing through his body, met her gaze with defiance. His teeth clenched as he stared back at her, refusing to be broken. Don't underestimate humans, he growled, his voice strained but resolute. Suddenly, the queen's pearlescent silver tail, gleaming with intricate scales, coiled around Leon's neck with a swift, serpentine motion. His eyes widened in shock, his mouth falling open as the sudden pressure tightened around his throat, catching him off guard. The smooth, cold scales pressed against his skin, a chilling reminder of her dominance. With a powerful flick of her tail, she hoisted Leon into the air, suspending him above her. His hands instinctively clawed at the scaled tail coiled tightly around his neck, but the grip only grew stronger, cutting off his breath. His chest heaved in vain as he fought for air. The queen gazed up at him with cold amusement, her eyes unflinching. What a stubborn man, she remarked, her voice tinged with mock admiration as she watched him struggle. As the tail tightened mercilessly around his neck, Leon's fingers pressed desperately against the constricting scales, searching in vain for a way to break free. His vision blurred, and his strength waned as the pressure mounted. In a final act of defiance or surrender, he closed his eyes and, with a strained voice, called out, Her Majesty, the words barely escaping his lips as he hoped to catch her attention, or her mercy. Upon hearing him address her as Her Majesty, she allowed a dark smile to spread across her lips. Oh, are you finally ready to beg for mercy? She taunted, her voice dripping with cruel satisfaction. As Leon continued to struggle against the tightening coil of her tail, the queen shook him roughly, her strength amplifying the pressure around his neck. Desperation etched across his face. He managed to speak through labored breaths. From the very start, he gasped, his voice strained but defiant. You made two critical mistakes. His eyes locked onto hers despite the choking hold. The queen's eyes widened in surprise and curiosity as she pondered what Leon could mean by two mistakes. Leon, still struggling to breathe, continued with a strained but unwavering voice. Firstly, he said, a powerful dragon slayer like me should never have been left alone with you. He paused for a moment before continuing. Secondly, a dragon should never taste a hero's blood. As he spoke, an intense crimson glow began to radiate from his eyes, transforming them into a fierce blood-red hue. 
Suddenly, the queen's silver eyes shifted to a vivid light red, mirroring the intense hue of the heroes. She was momentarily stunned, her hand instinctively moving to her chest as if in a trance. The realization dawned on her with shock. Tasting the hero's blood was not merely a symbolic act, it was a curse, known among the dragon clans as the blood curse. The weight of this revelation struck her deeply, her expression one of stunned disbelief as the implications of the curse began to sink in. The Dragon Queen released her grip on Leon, and he fell heavily to the ground, gasping for breath. Her once haughty demeanor shattered instantly, replaced by a look of complete disarray. The confident smile that had adorned her face vanished, leaving behind an expression of growing worry. As her composure unraveled, her body began to flush with a rising heat, a clear sign of her distress and the gravity of the situation. Her cheeks flushed a deep red as a wave of intense heat surged through her body. Struggling to maintain her balance, she collapsed to her knees, her strength failing her. She steadied herself by placing one trembling hand on the floor, her breathing ragged. Confusion and alarm filled her eyes as she questioned, why is my body reacting like this? Now on his feet, Leon looked down at the queen, who had slumped over, her head bowed in defeat and unable to meet his gaze. With a voice laced with grim certainty, he continued, Soon, your body will be overwhelmed with pain, a constant torment that will follow you for the rest of your life. His words were a chilling prophecy, underscoring the depth of her suffering. The queen's cheeks, now flushed a deep crimson, betrayed her loss of control. In a sudden, uncontrolled frenzy, she lunged at Leon, her hands gripping his shoulders with surprising strength. She pushed him forcefully, causing him to stumble and crash to the ground in shock. As Leon lay on the floor, bewildered by the sudden turn of events, the queen pressed her body against his chest, her eyes gleaming with a mix of lust and fevered desire. Her flushed cheeks and intense gaze conveyed a stark contrast to her earlier composure. Without warning, she leaned in and kissed him passionately, leaving Leon stunned and confused by the unexpected and inexplicable shift in her behavior. An hour later, the red aura that had surrounded her eyes began to fade, and she slowly regained her senses. Realizing the gravity of the situation, she quickly discovered she was naked and wrapped herself in a white cloth for modesty. Her anger flared as she turned towards Leon, who was now slumped against the black brick wall, asleep. With a mixture of confusion and fury, she demanded, What did you do to me? Leon stirred awake at the sound of the queen's anguished scream. He quickly realized the gravity of the situation. The blood curse was a forbidden technique, usable only once in a lifetime. When a dragon tasted a hero's blood, a soul connection was formed between them, binding their fates together. This meant that upon Leon's death, the curse would inflict unending pain on the queen. Furious, the queen challenged this explanation. She wondered why the curse was manifesting now, especially in a way that made her experience overwhelming lust if it was supposed to take effect only after Leon's death. Leon narrowed his eyes, his expression resolute. The lustful feelings you're experiencing might be an accidental side effect of the curse, he explained. I believe the curse's true pain is yet to come, but it seems the immediate side effect is to make you fixate on me. He was taken aback by how the curse had affected her, but he was certain that the true torment was yet to be unleashed. The queen shut her eyes in mortification, gripping the white cloth around her with trembling hands. Be quiet, she snapped her voice a mixture of embarrassment and irritation. Leon's lips curled into a knowing smile as he observed her distress. He remarked, Dragons adhere to a strict rule of monogamy. His chuckle carried a hint of dark satisfaction as he continued, After my death, not only will the great silver dragon queen be unable to find a new mate, but she will also be left without heirs. Furthermore, you'll be unable to explain this debacle to the dragon clan. The effects of this forbidden spell have certainly exceeded my expectations. The queen, unable to refute his claims, glared at him with a mixture of anger and helplessness. 
Leon's smile widened, his gaze mocking as he observed her silence. So, Her Majesty, the great Silver Dragon Queen, claimed I would have no successor, he teased with a playful glint in his eyes. But now, it seems you'll have none either. He placed a hand over his abdomen, knowing that the curse's repercussions meant there would be no future dragon successors to continue the lineage. Fuming with irritation at his taunts, the queen sprang to her feet, her hand arcing back as if to strike Leon. A fierce purple aura enveloped her hand, transforming it into a menacing dragon claw. As she advanced on him, her eyes blazing with fury, she spat, You bastard! The claw drew closer, and Leon's eyes began to lose their light, the last flickers of defiance fading. Summoning his remaining strength, he managed to utter, Do you wish to kill me yourself, your majesty? There's no need. I will die soon enough. His voice was a strained whisper, but it carried a weight of finality. Live with the hatred and the pain I've left you. This is my curse to you as a human. His words were a chilling declaration, marking his final act of defiance. Unable to bring herself to strike Leon, the queen withdrew her hand, her dragon claw receding back into its human form. The triumphant smirk that had once adorned her face faded into a sorrowful expression. As Leon lay unconscious on the floor, the Dragon Queen stood beside him, her gaze fixed on his unmoving body. A pained sigh escaped her lips as she murmured, You're just a human being, exacting revenge on me in such a wretched manner. And now, you wish to die? Her voice was tinged with a mixture of sadness and disbelief as she contemplated the cruel irony of his final act. With a resolute gleam in her eyes, the queen raised her hand once more, purple mana shimmering around it like a fierce, living flame. She was determined not to let him die so easily. With focused intensity, she channeled her mana into Leon's body. As the energy flowed through him, his chest began to glow with the same radiant purple aura, and a complex sigil slowly materialized on his unconscious form. The symbol pulsed with an eerie light, marking him with the queen's potent magic. Within the opulent confines of Rossweiss's castle, Leon lay unconscious in the queen's private chambers. Leon Cosmode, once a legendary figure known as the dragon-slaying hero, had a storied past that began in his early years. At just five years old, he had famously defeated a neighbor's vicious dog with his bare hands. His remarkable feat caught the attention of a passing elite dragon slayer who took him on as an apprentice. By the age of 10, Leon entered the prestigious Imperial Dragon Slayer Academy. His prodigious talents and relentless dedication led him to graduate at the youngest age ever, earning the highest evaluation in the Academy's history. At 15, Leon ventured onto the dragon slaying battlefield where he became a formidable force. He slew countless dragons, reclaimed lost territories, and achieved numerous military victories for the Empire. Revered as the strongest dragon-slaying hero, he was seen as the Empire's greatest hope to bring an end to the war. Yet despite his legendary status and unparalleled achievements, Leon's fate took a dramatic turn when he became a captive of the Dragon Clan. Leon slowly roused from a deep slumber, his eyes fluttering open after what felt like an eternity. It had been two years since his capture and subsequent collapse in the dungeon cell. Startled, he sprang upright in the bed, confusion etched deeply across his features. Sweat trickled down his face as he glanced around, his heart racing. The unfamiliar surroundings of the room were a stark contrast to the cold, dark confines of the dungeon he remembered. As he tried to piece together his new reality, the creak of a door opening broke through his disorientation. A young girl cautiously peeked into the room. She had striking black hair with strands of silver, and her ocean blue eyes were wide with curiosity. Her delicate frame stood by the door, her hand gripping the knob. Leon turned to face her, his surprise evident. The girl's beaming smile and the innocent joy in her eyes brought a blush to his cheeks. Her cuteness and the warmth of her expression contrasted sharply with the harshness of his memories, leaving him momentarily spellbound. As Leon pushed aside the duvet and sat up, resting his head on his hand, 
a profound realization dawned on him. The soft light filtering through the room and the gentle warmth suggested that his immense contributions to mankind had somehow led him to a place resembling heaven. With a newfound joy, he stood up and beaming with delight, pointed at the little girl. You must be the legendary angel, he announced, his voice filled with wonder. The girl, taken aback, looked puzzled. What's an angel? she asked, her innocent curiosity evident. Leon crouched down to meet her gaze, his smile broadening as he spoke gently. Hello, little angel. What's your name? Her face lit up with enthusiasm as she formed her small hand into a fist. My name is Muen, she replied proudly. Leon's eyes closed in contentment as he repeated the name in his mind, finding it fitting and pleasant. Yet he couldn't help but notice the unusual mix of black and silver in her hair and pondered the peculiarity to himself. The girl raised a finger and explained, My mum said Muen means the moon. Leon's surprise grew, and he questioned in awe, Do angels have mothers? His curiosity was piqued by this new revelation, adding another layer to his understanding of the mysterious realm he found himself in. Leon introduced himself with a gentle smile. My name is Leon, Leon Cosmode. The little girl stretched her arms high above her head, her cheerful energy radiating as she bounced on her toes. I know, Leon means lion, she chirped with a giggle. Leon's expression shifted to one of surprise. Who told you that? He asked, his brow furrowing. That's what my mum said, the little girl replied, her tone matter of fact. Leon's eyes widened shock rippling through him. May I know who your mother is? He asked cautiously, a strange tension building inside him. With an innocent smile, the girl answered, Rossweiss. The name struck him like a thunderbolt. His body stiffened, as if he'd been turned to stone. Rossweiss? His mind raced, and he stood up straight, pointing to himself in disbelief, a mixture of confusion and worry written on his face. If Ross Weiss is your mother, then that would mean... Before he could finish, the girl's voice interrupted him, filled with innocent certainty. You are my father. Her eyes sparkled with admiration, her face glowing with the hope that only a child could have. Leon stood frozen, struggling to process the reality of her words. Leon placed both hands on his head, disbelief washing over him in waves. His mind struggled to grasp the reality that this innocent child standing before him was truly his and Ross Weiss's. The weight of that revelation made his chest tighten and he could hardly breathe. The little girl, oblivious to his inner turmoil, turned and pointed towards someone behind him. Jolted from his daze, Leon turned slowly, his heart pounding in his chest. There, standing gracefully, was the silver-haired dragon queen herself, Rossweisa. Muen darted to her side, her tiny arms outstretched in excitement. Dad is awake, she cried, her voice filled with pure joy. Rossweisa smiled warmly as she gently stroked the girl's hair, her touch soft and affectionate. Yes, I know, she replied, her voice calm and knowing. He's finally awakened from his long slumber. Leon's eyes met hers, and for a moment, the air between them was thick with unspoken words. Her silver gaze locked onto him, and she smiled, a quiet, almost wistful smile. You finally woke up, Leon. But Leon could only grit his teeth, stunned into silence, his body tense as he struggled to process everything unfolding before him. Muin hugged her mother tightly, looking up with wide, innocent eyes. Mom must be happy to see Dad wake up, she said with a bright smile. You came to visit him every day. The Dragon Queen's expression shifted, a sly smile curling on her lips. That's right, she replied smoothly. Leon's face hardened, his teeth grinding together in silent frustration. Only a fool would believe that, he thought bitterly. Ross Weiss knelt slightly to Muen's level, her hand gently ruffling the little girl's soft hair. Muen, go outside and play for a while, she said sweetly, 
her tone softening. I need to talk to your father. With a cheerful wave and her eyes squeezed shut in childish excitement, Muin raised her hand and chirped, Yes, Mom, before scampering off, leaving the tense atmosphere behind her. Rossweisa strode toward Leon, her presence commanding as always. Instinctively, he took a step back, his voice laced with uncertainty. Is Muen really my daughter? With a playful, almost teasing smile, Rossweisa corrected him. She's not just a child, Leon. She's our biological daughter. Without warning, she gave him a gentle push into her bedchamber, her silver tail curling behind her to lock the door with a soft click. Her gaze lingered on him, unreadable. Tell me, she began, her voice smooth yet sharp. Do you hate me now? Leon straightened, his fists clenched tightly at his sides. His mind swirled with anger and confusion. Why did you give birth to the child? Why did you save me? His tone was demanding, as if the answers could somehow make sense of the chaos. Rossweiss's expression softened, though her eyes remained cold. You've been asleep for two years, Leon. After what you did to me, I wasn't going to just let it go. His anger flared. Do you think I wanted that? His voice rose, the weight of his emotions breaking through. Dragons and humans were different. We can't coexist. If things were different, if it weren't for the curse, I would never have touched you, Rossweisa. Her eyes flashed, but she remained silent, absorbing the intensity of his words. The tension between them thickened, unspoken resentment swirling in the air. The Dragon Queen moved closer, her face just inches from Leon's, her breath warm against his skin. Narrowing her eyes, she whispered, Oh, so touching me is torture for you. Her voice was laced with mockery. Leon snapped back without hesitation. Of course, he bit out. A smirk curled on Rossweiss's lips as her tail wrapped tightly around his leg. With a swift, effortless motion, she flung him onto the bed. Before Leon could react, she was on him, pushing him back down as he tried to rise. Crawling atop him, her predatory gaze locked onto his, and a flicker of fear lit up in Leon's eyes. He muttered, his voice shaky. What? What are you going to do? With one swift movement, Rossweiss tore his shirt open, the fabric ripping like paper. Her fingers glowed with purple mana, and a shimmering sigil appeared above them. She leaned in closer, her voice cold and commanding. I'm going to carve my own dragon mark on you. Leon struggled beneath her grip, but her strength was overwhelming. Panic rising in his chest, he pleaded, his voice desperate. Rossweisa, stop, please. But the Dragon Queen's eyes, burning with a fierce determination, showed no signs of mercy. With a tap to his chest, the purple sigil transferred to Leon's skin, burning itself into him like a brand. Rossweiss watched the mark take form with a cruel satisfaction. From today onwards, this will be your shame, she said, her voice low and triumphant. It means you are my prisoner, bound to me forever. You will never leave my side. She tilted her head, her silver hair cascading over her shoulder as she laughed, a maniacal chilling sound that echoed through the chamber. The purple sigil on her own chest began to glow in response, pulsing with the same eerie light. What will your fellow humans think, she taunted, when they see the dragon tattoo on your body? Will they still call you a great dragon-slaying hero, or see you as a traitor who surrendered to the dragon clan? Her mocking laughter filled the room as Leon's heart sank. He lay there, bound by the shame of the mark, knowing the weight of her words hung over his fate. The purple sigil seared into Leon's chest, the pain so intense that his body trembled. Sweat trickled down his face as he clenched his teeth, every muscle taut, trying to withstand the agony. Rossweisa leaned closer, her lips inches from his. She placed a finger on his lips, silencing any protest. Don't you understand, Leon? She whispered, her eyes locked onto his with a dangerous glint. The dragon race's concept of revenge has always been beyond human comprehension. 
It's not something human scientists can fathom. Our revenge is something far more twisted. Paranoia, extremity, and cruelty all intertwined. Her voice softened, but there was no kindness in her tone, only a seductive cruelty. I want you to live in this shame for the rest of your life, to feel the weight of this humiliation every day, and to be at my mercy for eternity. Her eyes gleamed with triumph as she studied his tormented expression. For Rossweisse, this wasn't just revenge. It was a deep, personal satisfaction. To make the greatest dragon slayer in human history a slave of the dragon clan, to be bound to me forever, it is the highest honor. Leon's face flushed red, a mix of pain and anger as his hand shot up, gripping her arm tightly. But Rossweiss only smiled wider, her voice dripping with menace. Let's get started, she whispered, her words a promise of the torment yet to come. Perched high atop the jagged peaks, the Silver Dragon Castle gleamed under the sun's radiant light, its stone walls shimmering like polished silver. The sheer size of the fortress was breathtaking, its towers spiraling upward as if reaching for the sky itself. Intricate carvings adorned the castle's facade, with sprawling arches and towering spires giving it a grandeur straight out of a fairy tale. Within its labyrinthine halls, two dragon maids strolled down a long corridor, their black and white uniforms a striking contrast to the opulence around them. The stone floors echoed softly with their footsteps, and the scent of fresh mountain air filtered in through the tall, arched windows. One of the maids let out a light chuckle, her hand resting on the handle of the basket they carried between them. The queen seems to be in a rather good mood today, she mused, her tone playful, as if sharing a secret. Her companion, locking arms with her in a friendly gesture, giggled softly and covered her mouth with her free hand, leaning in close. You don't know, do you? She whispered, her voice brimming with excitement. Her husband woke up. The first maid's eyes widened in surprise, her expression quickly replaced with understanding. They exchanged knowing smiles as they continued their journey through the castle, their whispers of the queen's good mood and her awakened husband lingering in the air like a well-kept secret. Leon crouched a few feet away from the passing maids, hidden behind the curve of a marble pillar. His breathing was steady, though dark circles beneath his eyes betrayed the exhaustion that weighed heavily on him. He strained to hear their conversation, catching every word with a bitter scowl. Bah, that female dragon actually announced to the public that I was her husband, he muttered his voice a low, irritated growl. The thought churned inside him like a storm, his hand reflexively moving to his side where the memories of recent events ached the most. His eyes, rimmed with deep blue bags from sleepless nights, flickered with frustration. You have no idea how terrifying that mother dragon is, he whispered under his breath, the words laced with a mix of disbelief and resentment. The memory of the Dragon Queen flooded his mind. Her relentless demands, the way she claimed him without mercy. Her strength was overwhelming, and her hold on him, unrelenting. Leon's body tensed as he recalled how the Dragon Queen had taken full advantage of his helpless state. Days blurred into each other, the torturous routine of her insatiable desires leaving him no peace. The constant pressure, the weight of her body against his, the way she drained his energy day and night left him feeling like his very essence had been siphoned away. His waist ached with a dull pain, almost broken from her forceful acts. 
A fire sparked within him, rage simmering beneath his tired exterior. His fist clenched tight, knuckles white with tension as his teeth ground together. I, Leon, will never stay here and become her plaything, he swore, a defiant gleam in his eye. His resolve hardened. He would not allow himself to be trapped in this twisted fate. Not by her, not by anyone. As Leon stealthily moved through the winding corridors of the Dragon Castle, his every step was careful and measured, avoiding the ever-watchful eyes of the Dragon Guards and Maids. His heart raced, but his movements remained silent, slipping into the shadows whenever he heard the distant clink of armor. He came to a sudden halt, pressing his back against the cold stone wall when he spotted four guards near the side entrance of the castle. One of them, a large, imposing figure pointed to his right and barked orders to the others, their voices echoing through the stone courtyard. Leon dared not reveal himself, keeping his body pressed tightly against the rough surface, blending into the darkened alcove. Peeking out cautiously, he observed the guards more closely, realizing the futility of trying to escape through any of the guarded exits. So, they're patrolling all the side entrances, he thought, frustration tightening his chest. The Dragon Queen's clutches were tighter than he had anticipated. As he scanned the area for any alternative, his eyes caught something unusual, a peculiar section of the castle wall. His gaze narrowed. How come there's a hole here? He murmured to himself, intrigued. He swiftly moved toward it, staying low to avoid detection. The long grass had grown wild, concealing the small opening in the castle's ancient stone walls. The guards had clearly missed it, hidden beneath the overgrowth. Leon crouched down, his hands brushing aside the grass, revealing a small, dark passage. The hole was narrow and rough, but there was light on the other side, and beyond that, grass. Leon hesitated for a moment, suspicion creeping in. Could this be a trap? He wondered, his mind racing through the possibilities. Yet, it was his only option, and he couldn't afford to stay within the castle much longer. Leon shut his eyes tightly, giving both his cheeks a firm slap to dismiss any lingering thoughts of a trap. He couldn't afford to overthink it. Escape was his only option now, and the risk was worth it. No matter the cost, he had to leave the Dragon Queen's castle. Even if it was a trap, he resolved to force his way out. With renewed determination, he steadied his gaze and began crawling through the narrow hole. Goodbye, perverted Mother Dragon, he muttered under his breath. As for the little grain named Muen, she's adorable, but for now, she can only be yours. He pressed on, his body squeezing through the tight passage, the faint light ahead promising freedom. Unbeknownst to him, Muen stood atop the castle walls, her wide ocean blue eyes sparkling as she admired the scenery. Her tiny hands gripped the stone edge as she marveled at the world below. She turned to her mother, eyes bright with excitement, and pointed toward the distant hole in the castle wall. Mom, look, dad is digging a dog hole. How cool, she exclaimed, her innocent voice ringing with pride. The Dragon Queen, lounging in her swimwear on a foldable deck chair, lazily lifted her head with a knowing smile. Hmm, I saw it. He's quite something, isn't he? She responded to Muen, her voice dripping with amusement. Muen, brimming with excitement, turned to her mother. When will mom go and fish him back? She asked with an innocent grin. Rossweisa chuckled as she stood up, gracefully walking toward her daughter. She crouched down to meet Muen at eye level, her silvery hair cascading over her shoulders. Locking eyes with her, she gently placed a finger on Muen's lips. Muen, darling, you can't say fish him back when talking about your dad. That's very rude, she chided softly, her voice carrying a playful reprimand. Muen tilted her head, confusion etched across her little face as she placed her hands on her hips. So, what should I say? She asked earnestly, her wide eyes fixed on her mother. Rossweiss's smile broadened, her pearl-white fangs gleaming in the sunlight as an ominous glint flickered in her eyes. You should say, she purred, her tone dark and mischievous, that I will capture your father and bring him back. Sometime later, Leon finally emerged from the castle walls and sprinted across the vast open field. 
his breath coming in ragged gasps. Sweat trickled down his face, dripping from his brow as he pushed himself through the rugged terrain. After what felt like hours of climbing mountains and winding through forests, his eyes finally caught sight of the distant borders of the human territory. Relief flickered in his chest as he slowed his pace, scanning the dense green surroundings. He thought to himself, I've come too far. That dragon won't be able to catch up now. But just as he began to feel a hint of victory, a sudden gust of wind swept across the treetops, ruffling the leaves and sending a chill through his spine. His heart pounded and instinctively, he looked up. His blood ran cold. Above him, cutting through the sky like a silver streak, was Rosweisa, the silver dragon queen, in her true form. Her massive wings beat the air with a ferocious speed, closing the distance between them with terrifying ease. Her scales gleamed in the sunlight, a fearsome sight of raw power. Leon's eyes widened and his heart sank into the pit of his stomach. Rosweisa he muttered in disbelief, before shouting her name angrily into the wind, as if his voice alone could halt her relentless pursuit. The Dragon Queen swooped down, her piercing blue eyes locked onto Leon with a mix of amusement and menace. You're quite the runner, Leon, she mused, her massive jaws opening wide as if to snatch him up in one bite. Cursing under his breath, Leon's heart pounded with terror. He turned on his heel, desperate to flee, but it was useless. In a blur of silver scales and powerful wings, Rosweisa flew past him with ease, landing gracefully before him. Her towering form loomed over him, casting a long shadow that made him feel as small as an ant. Her elegant, gleaming scales shimmered in the waning light, a reminder of her deadly beauty. It must be fun, playing games with me like this, right? She hissed, her voice dripping with cold sarcasm. Her gaze bore down on him, unrelenting and sharp as daggers. Rosweisa leaned her long, sinuous neck down, bringing her massive head close to his level. Hmm, she growled, her breath hot against his skin. I am indeed very satisfied, but don't you think your escape was a little too smooth? Her voice dropped to a dangerous whisper. Who helped you, diverted the guards, left a hole for you to slip away? Her eyes gleamed with suspicion and anger, daring him to lie. Leon's heart pounded as he stood frozen in front of the towering Dragon Queen. Even if I knew it was a trap, I had no choice, he admitted, his voice heavy with defeat. His brow furrowed, the weight of his failed escape settling over him. I just didn't expect you to catch up so quickly. Rosweisa, now just a few feet away, let her warm breath wash over him like a summer breeze. Her massive form radiated an almost casual power, yet her words were anything but gentle. What will happen if you return to human territory now? She asked, her tone laced with satisfaction. You already bear my mark on your chest. Do you think they will still recognize you as a dragon slayer? Leon's face hardened as he regained his composure, his defiance returning. He locked eyes with the silver dragon, his jaw clenched but steady. Then I will start my life again as an ordinary person, he replied, his voice unwavering. That's still better than being tortured by you. His eyes were resolute, refusing to waver under her gaze. The queen's fury ignited at his words. She spread her enormous silver wings, casting a shadow that swallowed the sky. Tsisk, you don't know how to appreciate my kindness, she snarled the force of her wings sending a gust of wind that whipped around Leon, nearly knocking him off his feet. In one swift motion, Rosweiss's massive claw closed around him, lifting him off the ground. Leon let out a scream of surprise. Let me go. Where are you taking me, you dragon? He shouted, his voice filled with terror. With effortless power, Rosweiss soared high into the sky, the ground quickly disappearing beneath them. The evening sun was sinking below the horizon, its dim rays gleaming off her silver scales, making them shimmer like molten metal. Since you want to go back so much, she said, her voice cold and mocking, I'll help you. The evening sky had long given way to the cloak of night. 
Three hours later, Rossweiss's massive dragon form glided through the dark sky, her silhouette briefly passing across the face of the bright moon. Below them lay the Empire's border city, its distant lights flickering faintly through the darkness. Without warning, Rossweiss opened her claws, releasing Leon into the open air. His stomach lurched as he plummeted hundreds of feet. Terror gripped his face, his arms flailing as he fell, the wind whipping past him. He crashed through the trees, branches snapping violently under the weight of his fall, before slamming hard onto the ground, the impact jarring his entire body. Groaning, Leon sat up, his head pounding from the fall, his hands pressed against his temples as he tried to ease the sharp pain coursing through him. Slowly regaining his senses, Leon stood, dusting off the dirt and leaves that clung to his torn clothes. His eyes focused ahead, and through the dense trees, he saw it. Houses illuminated by the warm glow of lanterns, a faint sign of civilization beyond the forest. Leon's eyes widened in disbelief as he took in the village surrounding him, his mouth hanging open. Is this a human town? He muttered to himself, astonished to find a settlement hidden deep within the forest. Rossweisa, now back in her human form, stood beside him with her arms crossed. That's right, she said, her voice carrying a hint of amusement. That's the human empire. As she gazed at the village, her posture relaxed. She continued. So, now that you see this long-lost human town, do you really think you can return to the human world by merely stepping into it? Her tone was almost conversational, as if she were discussing the weather rather than Leon's fate. Leon stared at the village, his mouth still agape, as a tear slowly formed in his eye. The weight of his situation crashed down on him like a heavy stone, and a profound realization began to sink in. The Dragon Queen's gaze flickered toward Leon, her eyes glinting with a mischievous light. A grin curved on her lips as she spoke. Leon, you can't go back, even if it seems within reach. As she spoke, the mark on her chest began to pulse with a haunting purple glow. Leon's dazed expression snapped into focus as he looked down at his own chest. The mark that Rossweisa had branded onto him now shimmered with an eerie, violet light. A wave of fear washed over him as he stumbled backward, his hands scrambling to find purchase against the rough bark of a nearby tree. His teeth clenched in a grimace of desperation as he watched Rossweisa approach him with a casual, almost predatory grace. Oh, I forgot to mention, Rossweisa said with a cruel twist to her smile. When one of the two people bearing a dragon mark desires the other, the mark will react in kind. Rossweisa drew closer to Leon until they were mere inches apart, her warm breath tantalizingly brushing against his skin. Her seductive eyes bore into his with an intense, unblinking gaze. Pressing her body against his, she placed her hand over the glowing purple sigil on his chest. The sigil's aura flared brighter, casting a purplish glow around them. You must be feeling the heat all over now, she murmured, her voice a silky whisper. It's as if the very air is charged with a desperate urge, making it unbearable for you, isn't it? Leon, struggling to maintain control and gritting his teeth, forced himself to ask, Do you... really want this? Rossweiss's eyes remained locked on his. Her cheeks flushed a deep crimson. She answered softly but with unwavering resolve. Yes. Do you know why I brought you here? I wanted you to feel the weight of your shame right at the edge of your hometown, so close yet so far. Sweat dripped down Leon's face, mixing with the tension etched into every line of his determined expression. His grip tightened around his shirt, knuckles whitening as he faced Rossweisa. Do you really believe this, Mark? He said, his voice resolute, will make me lose faith. With a sudden fierce movement, Leon grasped Rossweisa's wrist causing her eyes to widen in surprise. His grip was unyielding, his resolve clear. I will wait for the right moment, he declared, his gaze burning with intensity. When that time comes, I'll make sure to repay you double for every ounce of humiliation you've inflicted on me. His words were a fierce promise, each one laced with the bitterness of his resolve. The Dragon Queen's eyes briefly widened in surprise at the depth of the hatred Leon harbored for her. 
For a fleeting moment, she was taken aback by his unyielding defiance. Regaining her composure, she closed her eyes and allowed a serene smile to grace her lips, fully accepting the intensity of his animosity. Her gaze then hardened, a steely resolve settling in. That won't stop me, she said, her voice unwavering and resolute. I'll be waiting for you, dead or alive. Her words were a chilling promise, etched with unshakable determination. As she pressed her body against Leon, her strength radiated through him, overwhelming his resistance. The mark on her chest pulsed with a deeper intensity, its glow becoming more pronounced and commanding. Leon, caught in her dominating presence, could only grit his teeth, unable to fight back against the suffocating pressure. Under the pale light of the moon, the night sky shimmered above the border city, casting an ethereal glow over the landscape. Leon and Rossweisa sat beneath the massive trunk of an ancient tree, the silver leaves rustling faintly in the cool breeze. Rossweisa, her eyes closed in satisfaction, quietly adjusted her disheveled clothes. The glowing purple mark on her chest had finally faded, leaving behind only the memory of its pulsing dominance. A slow, contented smile crept across her lips, the hunger that had driven her moments earlier now completely sated. Turning her head slightly, she glanced at Leon, who lay sprawled on the grass beneath her. I must say, she murmured with a satisfied grin, her voice dripping with smugness. I'm very pleased with your performance just now. Leon, utterly drained and broken, lay motionless on the ground. His body trembled with exhaustion as silent tears fell down his cheeks. The weight of the ordeal had stolen his strength and the anguish in his eyes reflected a soul worn thin. Leon turned to find Rossweiss leaning close, her lips curling into a mischievous smile. Their eyes locked as she traced lazy circles with her fingers over the spot where the purple sigil had once burned on his skin. How about I bring you here every month, she teased, to visit your hometown. Irritation flared in Leon as he scooted away from her, sitting upright. Bah! I see you're just a female dragon with your head in the clouds, always thinking about how you're going to drain me. He snapped, his voice laced with anger and disgust at the memory of what had just transpired. Rossweiss sighed, her smile faltering slightly. I see you saw through my little tease, she remarked with a hint of amusement, though there was a glint of something deeper in her eyes. Shifting from her playful demeanor, Rossweiss stood up, brushing off the moment. Let's go, she said, her voice steady. Our daughter is waiting for us at home. She stretched her arms to the sides and her pearly silver wings unfurled gracefully from her back, catching the moonlight. Leon, still sitting against the tree trunk, slowly pulled his shirt back on, the weight of exhaustion still pressing down on him. As Rossweisa began to transform, a quiet voice came from behind her. Wait, Leon called out, his tone hesitant but firm. The Dragon Queen paused, her wings still shimmering, and turned to look at him. Her gaze softened slightly, curiosity flickering in her eyes as she met his. What is it? She asked, her transformation momentarily stilled, waiting for whatever he had to say. Leon stood and strode past her, his gaze resolute. As a dragon slayer, I refuse to be dragged back like some captured prey, he said, determination hardening his voice. I can walk by myself. Rossweisa, her wings still outstretched, watched him with a look of mild confusion as he marched ahead. She remained silent for a moment, her silver eyes tracking his every step before calling out, Oh? From here to the Silver Dragon Castle, even flying at my speed, it would take at least three hours for a human to walk it. Ten days, maybe half a month. Leon didn't even bother to look back, his posture rigid with defiance. It's just ten days or half a month, he retorted, his voice filled with spite. Don't underestimate human endurance. He kept walking, his head high and pride wounded, determined to show her he was no victim of her whims. As Rossweiss's wings retracted into her back, she crossed her arms and smirked, her voice dripping with amusement. I want to see how long you can hold out, she teased, 
a sly smile curling at the edges of her lips. Watching him stumble along, she found the sight of his stubborn pride more entertaining than anything else. After a while, Leon's steps began to falter, his breath growing heavier, his energy clearly fading from the grueling walk. Rossweisa, still following behind at a leisurely pace, looked on with satisfaction. Getting tired, are we? She called out, her tone smug. If you ask me... Her taunt was abruptly cut off as Leon shot back, his voice rough with exhaustion, but laced with defiance. Tired? Who said I was tired? His fists clenched tightly, his knuckles white with determination. The grit in his voice matched the fierce resolve in his eyes, refusing to give her the satisfaction of seeing him break. He pushed forward, his pride carrying him, even as his body begged for rest. Rossweisa closed her eyes, a playful smile dancing on her lips as she mocked him. Humph, the only thing that's tough is your mouth, she teased, her voice dripping with mockery. Leon, visibly irritated by her remark, spun around, the muscles in his jaw tightening. You... He managed, his frustration simmering just beneath the surface. But before he could finish, their playful exchange was abruptly cut short by the sound of approaching footsteps. The air around them grew still, and both Rossweisa and Leon froze, their eyes widening in unison. The world seemed to pause for a heartbeat as they slowly turned their heads toward the source of the noise. Emerging from the shadows ahead was the dragon army, their presence imposing and undeniable. At the front, the leader marched with a commanding stride, his figure illuminated by the flickering light of medieval torches held high by his soldiers. The flames cast eerie shadows over the forest, their glow reflecting in the wide, startled eyes of both Rossweiss and Leon. The sudden tension hung heavy in the air, the playful atmosphere now replaced by something far more ominous. Seeing the dragon-slaying army approach, Leon's mood lifted instantly. His eyes gleamed with a sudden hope, and he stretched out his hand instinctively. Great, these guys might help me get rid of this dragon, he muttered excitement rising in his voice. But beside him, Rossweiss's demeanor darkened. A wave of frustration rolled off her as her eyes narrowed, sharp as daggers. Her lips curled back into a snarl, teeth gritted in barely contained fury. The air around her began to shimmer with her rising aura, thickening with the intensity of her power. Her irritation toward both the approaching army and Leon's naive hope for escape was palpable, like the calm before a violent storm. Upon seeing the dragon-slaying army, Leon's heart briefly surged with hope, but then reality struck him like a blow. No, she's no ordinary dragon. She's the queen. His throat tightened as the thought settled in. If he called for help, Rossweisa wouldn't hesitate. She'd slaughter them all. He turned to glance at her, dread seeping into his bones. Her entire demeanor had shifted, her once playful expression was now twisted with murderous intent. Her eyes had turned a deep, blood-red hue, glowing with a violent hunger for carnage. The air around her crackled with bloodlust, thick and oppressive. Sensing the sudden shift in energy, the leader of the army raised his hand, signaling his men to halt. The guards, mid-patrol, froze in their tracks. His sharp gaze scanned the tree line, landing on the two figures standing in the forest an unfamiliar pair in the midst of this eerie tension. His instincts flared, and he could sense that something was terribly wrong. The leader, a man with rugged brown hair still seated on his horse, squinted at the strange pair before him. His voice cut through the tense atmosphere like a knife. Are you lost? He asked, his tone even but probing. The question seemed to hang in the air, thick with the weight of the situation. Leon froze. Caught off guard, his mind racing for a response. He could feel Rossweiss's aura darkening beside him, her annoyance palpable. She hadn't moved, her crimson eyes fixed on the soldiers with an icy glare. The air was heavy, charged with her barely restrained fury. Desperate to defuse the situation, Leon forced a nervous laugh, breaking the silence. No, no, we're just hanging out, he stammered awkwardly scratching the back of his head, 
his hand trembling slightly. The words felt hollow, but he had no choice. He couldn't risk implicating these men, couldn't risk their lives. Every fiber of his being told him to run, but there was no escape from the Dragon Queen's wrath. The moment felt fragile, like a spark waiting to ignite the wildfire. The captain of the dragon slaying army dismounted from his horse, his boots crunching softly against the forest floor. This isn't the kind of place to be wandering around, he said, his tone laced with concern. There are dangerous creatures here, not to mention wild animals. How about I give you both a ride back to safety? His gaze was earnest as he took a step toward Leon, his hand outstretched in a friendly gesture. My name's Walker, he added, introducing himself with a firm nod. Captain of the 47th Squadron of the Imperial Dragon Slayer Army. Leon's heart raced as Walker approached. He could feel Ross Weiss's icy stare behind him, her presence growing more dangerous with every passing second. Forcing a smile, Leon reached out and shook the captain's hand, but his grip was tense, almost urgent. I appreciate the offer, really, he said, his voice strained. But we're fine. We've had some self-defense training, so we can handle ourselves. Walker, oblivious to the danger he was approaching, took another step back, but Leon eyes wide with warning. Please, don't come any closer, he added, his voice barely concealing the panic rising in his chest. He glanced over his shoulder at Rossweisa, whose cold, emotionless expression hadn't wavered. Her silence was more terrifying than words. The atmosphere between them thickened as the tension mounted, and Leon knew one wrong move could spell disaster for everyone involved. Walker came to an abrupt halt, his eyes widening as he scrutinized Leon. Hmm? You look oddly familiar. Have we met somewhere before? His voice carried a hint of recognition, making Leon's heart skip a beat. He hadn't anticipated that soldiers might recognize him as the famed Dragon Slayer. Leon's pulse quickened, and his body tensed at the captain's inquiry. Rossweiss, meanwhile, shifted her icy gaze from Leon to Walker, her expression as unreadable as ever, but her aura crackling with latent menace. Sensing the danger escalating, Leon acted swiftly. He seized Rossweiss's hand, pulling her towards him with a forceful urgency that caught her off guard. The sudden motion momentarily disrupted her cold resolve, snapping her out of her murderous trance. Leon forced a smile, though his eyes remained tightly shut against the tension. Sir, you must be mistaken, he said, his voice smooth but edged with anxiety. I have one of those faces that people often recognize, even when I'm not the person they think I am. My wife gets me confused all the time, too. His attempt at lightheartedness was a desperate bid to defuse the mounting threat, hoping to deflect Walker's suspicion and buy them some time. Rossweiss's eyes widened in surprise as Leon took the lead, his unexpected assertiveness catching her off guard. I'll go back with you willingly, Leon whispered urgently, his voice low and imploring. But please help me get rid of them first. He hoped that by showing deference to the Dragon Queen, he might persuade her to show leniency towards the soldiers. Leon maintained a facade of affection as he smiled at Walker, holding Rossweisa close in a show of loving intimacy. Rossweisa, though initially taken aback, closed her eyes and allowed the charade to continue, playing along as the devoted wife. Walker, sensing the private moment, chuckled and stepped back. Then I won't intrude on your romantic scene, he said with a knowing grin, turning to mount his horse. Leon kept his arm firmly around Rossweiss's waist, watching as the dragon-slaying army retreated, their carriages disappearing into the distance. As soon as the soldiers were out of sight, Rossweiss's expression hardened. Have you had your fill of pretending? She spat, her voice dripping with disdain. Leon, oblivious to how tightly he was holding Rossweiss, jolted in surprise at her sharp words. Instinctively, he released his grip and stepped back pressing his back against the rough bark of the tree trunk. Rossweiss, her expression one of displeasure, glared at him while rubbing her wrist. Crossing her arms, Rossweiss's voice took on a stern tone. You were wise not to seek their help, but there's one thing you need to understand, she said, 
letting her words linger in the crisp night air. She approached him with measured steps, her gaze unyielding. You must understand your place. Even though we have a child together, it does not make me your wife, she said, tapping her finger sharply against his chest. Leon averted his eyes slightly, his voice steady but distant. I never considered myself your husband. With a frustrated sigh, Rossweisa turned away from him, her arms still crossed. She closed her eyes for a moment, gathering her composure. Let's go, she said, her tone softening only slightly. We still have a long way to travel. Leon, exhaling in relief, followed her lead as they resumed their journey. A sudden, searing pain lanced through Leon's hand, the very hand that had tried to restrain Rossweiss's powers from harming the soldiers. The agony was so intense, he gritted his teeth to keep from crying out. He glanced down at his palm, now marred by a deep burn, and saw the back of Rossweiss as his vision began to blur. With a final, pained gasp, he drifted into unconsciousness. The sound of his collapse caused Rossweiss to turn around sharply. Her eyes fell upon Leon crumpled on the ground, and she approached him with a look of disdain, her arms crossed. You fainted, she remarked, her tone clearly unimpressed. With a flick of irritation, she observed him with a sneer. What a fragile human, she muttered, as her long silver hair began to ripple and rise, her purple aura flaring around her. The transformation into her dragon form was swift and majestic. Leaning down, she picked Leon up delicately with her jaws and tossed him gently into the air. He landed unconscious on her broad back. I'll interpret this as a plea for mercy, she said with a hint of mockery, spreading her immense wings and taking flight across the morning sky. Back at the Dragon Queen's castle, Leon stirred awake, his eyelids fluttering open slowly. The room was dimly lit by the morning sun filtering through the tall windows. As his vision cleared, a soft voice full of excitement broke the silence. Dad, you're awake! Muin's voice rang out, her eyes gleaming with delight. She stood beside his bed, her small tail swaying back and forth with barely contained joy. Leon groaned lifting his head slightly before resting it back down, eyes squinting as the remnants of last night's ordeal pulsed painfully through him. How? How did I get back here? He muttered, pressing a hand to his forehead, trying to soothe the dull ache that lingered. It was mom who brought you back, Muen chimed in, her tail still wagging as she beamed at him, clearly overjoyed at his recovery. Leon's expression darkened, a scowl settling on his face as memories of Rossweiss flashed in his mind, her massive dragon form capturing him as if he were nothing more than prey. His jaw clenched at the thought. 
Suddenly, a sharp sting in his hand brought him back to the present. His gaze dropped to the hand that had been scorched when he'd tried to hold back Ross Weiss's power, the skin still raw in his memory. This is, he murmured, his voice tinged with surprise. The hand, once seared by the encounter, was now carefully bandaged. Before he could process it, Muen's small hands grasped his, her eyes sparkling with pride. I'm the one who bandaged it for dad, she exclaimed, her face alight with the hope that he'd praise her hard work. She gently squeezed his hand, eager for his approval. Leon stared at his bandaged hand, a wave of surprise washing over him. His daughter's care was unexpected, especially considering everything he had learned about dragons. He recalled the words of an old dragonologist. Dragons are a ferocious race, born into violence and bloodshed, their nature forged in fire and conflict from the moment they hatch. And yet, here was Muen, his daughter, undeniably part dragon, her tail swayed happily, her scales shimmering faintly in the light, but there was no trace of hostility in her. She looked up at him with nothing but pure affection, treating him not as a mere human, but as her father, with all the tenderness and love a child could offer. Leon's brow furrowed in thought. Is it because she's a human-dragon hybrid? He mused silently, trying to reconcile the fierce nature of dragons with the innocence that radiated from his daughter. Slowly, almost hesitantly, he began to reach out, moving his hand toward Muen as if testing whether this connection, this bond, was truly real. Leon smiled warmly as he gently ruffled Muen's hair, his affection evident in the way his hand lingered on her head. Well, Muen is awesome, he said softly, watching as her eyes lit up with delight. Muen giggled, her small arms wrapping around his waist, basking in the warmth of her father's embrace. As they pulled apart, Leon locked eyes with her, his tone playful but carrying a hint of seriousness. Raising a finger, he added with a teasing smile, Muen is so cute, but when you grow up, you must not be like your mother. Muen's laughter paused, and she blinked up at him, her mouth slightly agape in confusion. What do you mean, Daddy? she asked, her young mind trying to piece together his words. Before Leon could respond, a soft scoff echoed from the doorway. Ross Weissa stood there, arms crossed, leaning casually against the frame with a knowing smirk playing on her lips. Her narrowed eyes glinted with mild amusement as they scrutinized him. And what's so wrong with being like me? She asked, her voice low, but edged with a playful warning. Leon, caught off guard by her sudden presence, swiftly moved away from Muen, his expression shifting from relaxed to wary. He met Ross Weiss's gaze, knowing full well that his jest had not gone unnoticed, yet feeling the weight of her presence all the same. Ross Weiss strode into the room with a casual grace, her piercing gaze still fixed on Leon, clearly unimpressed by his earlier remark. Her eyes bore into him, silently demanding an answer. Leon, feeling the intensity of her presence, averted his gaze, unable to meet her eyes. It's nothing, he muttered, turning his head away, trying to dismiss the tension that lingered between them. Muen, oblivious to the undercurrent between her parents, beamed with pride. Her eyes sparkled as she turned to her mother, eager to share her accomplishment. Mom, Muen bandaged Dad's wound just like you said, she chirped, lifting Leon's injured hand high above her head, displaying her handiwork like a trophy. Ross Weiss's gaze softened slightly as she shifted her attention to Muen, though her stern demeanor remained. She nodded in approval, but her eyes flickered back to Leon, as if silently reminding him of the unspoken tension between them. Ross Weiss locked eyes with her daughter, her gaze firm, yet instructive. This is your responsibility, she said, her tone carrying the weight of a lesson. It's important to know how to treat the wounded, especially when it's family. Her words were not just an instruction, but a code of duty she wanted Muen to understand. Yes, mom. Muen replied eagerly, her small hands clenched into determined fists, her eyes glowing with enthusiasm. She seemed to thrive under her mother's stern guidance, soaking in every word. 
Leon, watching the exchange, couldn't help but notice how strict Rossweiser was with their daughter. While he admired the discipline she instilled, he felt a tug of concern for Muin's innocent spirit, wondering if Rossweiser's rigid expectations were too much. Muen, he said softly, his voice cutting through the moment as he crouched down to her level, a warm smile spreading across his face. Why don't you go hide in the garden? I'll come find you when I count to 100, okay? His hand gently ruffled her hair, a gesture of comfort and affection. Muen's face lit up at the suggestion, her tail swaying with excitement. Okay, Dad, she chirped, darting out of the room in a burst of youthful energy, leaving the tension between her parents lingering in the air. Muen's eyes sparkled with pure delight, her hands shooting up in excitement. Really? Dad wants to play hide-and-seek with Muen? she exclaimed, her voice filled with wonder, as if it was the best news she'd heard all day. Leon pressed a hand against his chest, his expression firm yet tender as he looked down at her. Of course, he said with a resolute smile. I'm not like your mother. Now go quickly before I start counting. With a giggle, Muen spun on her heels and dashed toward the garden, her laughter echoing through the halls. Oh no, Dad, don't count so fast, she called out, her voice trailing off as she disappeared into the greenery. Leon watched her little form sprint into the distance and began to count slowly, his voice steady. One, two, three. As he reached the count of ten, a small smile crept across his face. Behind him, Ross Weisse, who had been silently observing the scene, allowed a rare smile to grace her lips, her eyes following Muen's joyful sprint. Despite her stern nature, the sight of their daughter's happiness softened her gaze, if only for a fleeting moment. As soon as Muen dashed out the door, Leon swung his legs over the side of the bed, sitting upright. His eyes, once soft with amusement, narrowed as he focused on Rossweiser. Hey, I'm talking to you, he said, his voice low and edged with concern. Rossweiss, who had been watching Muen's retreat, shifted her gaze back to Leon, her expression hardening. What? she replied, her tone flat, the playful atmosphere vanishing in an instant. The air between them grew tense. Leon stood up facing her, his demeanor now matching the gravity in his voice. Aren't you being too hard on our child? The smile that had once danced on his lips was replaced by a stern, unyielding look. His eyes bore into hers, filled with the weight of unspoken worries. Rossweiss sat casually on the edge of the bed, her posture relaxed, but her gaze sharp and unwavering. We dragons all went through this, she said, her voice firm. Only by being strict with our children from a young age can we cultivate strong warriors. Leon, his expression softening with concern, stepped forward, stretching out his arm as if trying to bridge the distance between them. But she's not completely a dragon, and besides, Muen is so cute, can you really be that hard on her? His voice held a note of pleading, hoping to appeal to Rossweiss's softer side. Rossweiss's eyes flickered with irritation as she crossed her arms and closed her eyes, her expression unyielding. She is a dragon, she said flatly, and cute is a derogatory word for a dragon. The tension in the room thickened as her words settled in the air, her pride as a dragon evident. Leon, sensing the need to shift the mood, allowed a hint of mockery to creep into his tone. You're pretty cute too, you know. A small, teasing smile tugged at his lips, hoping to break through her stoic demeanor. Rossweiss's eyes opened, narrowing slightly, but the corner of her mouth twitched. Just for a moment, a crack in her otherwise impenetrable facade. Leon's playful remark clearly struck a nerve and without hesitation, she grabbed the front of his shirt, yanking him close, her face inches from his. You are just a slave to me, a way to vent my anger. Don't start thinking otherwise, she snapped, her voice sharp and cutting. Leon felt a cold shiver run down his spine as her words sank in. He knew better than to argue, understanding the precariousness of his situation. He nodded silently, 
his gaze dropping slightly, acknowledging his role in this strange dynamic. Rossweiser leaned in closer, her grip on his shirt loosening and her fingers slowly sliding down to rest on his chest. Her intense expression softened, shifting into something more playful, almost teasing. It's good that you understand, she said, her voice dropping to a smoother, more intimate tone. I am the queen of the Silver Dragon Clan. I have a lot of government affairs to handle. Taking care of the children? That's your responsibility now. Her eyes glimmered with amusement as she locked her gaze with his, a mischievous smile curling on her lips. She moved in even closer, her warm breath grazing his ear, sending an involuntary shiver down his spine. That kid really likes you, she whispered, her voice laced with a strange, possessive warmth that left Leon frozen in place. The scene shifted to the garden of the Silver Dragon's castle, bathed in the soft golden light of the sun. Vibrant greenery stretched in every direction, the lush foliage swaying gently in the breeze. Flowers of all kinds bloomed in vivid colors, painting the landscape with bursts of life. Leon walked along the stone path, his boots crunching softly against the earth, his thoughts heavy. I am the Dragon Queen, and I am very busy, he muttered to himself, mocking Ross Weiss's words with a frown. As if it's normal for dragon slayers to be stuck babysitting. His voice was low, frustration creeping into his tone. As he continued walking, lost in his thoughts, something caught his eye. He slowed his pace and turned his head, noticing a small shadow flitting behind the thick garden hedges. Just barely visible, it peeked out from behind a large pillar, watching him intently. For a moment, he simply watched the shadow move, waiting for her next move, his earlier frustration softening in the presence of her innocent joy. The small, shadowy figure was none other than his daughter, Muen. Despite her best efforts to stay hidden, Leon couldn't help but smirk at her naive attempt. She still has a lot to learn, he thought, amused by her innocence. Do you think you can't be found if you hide behind me? Leon called out, his voice playful, as he turned fully toward her. A contented smile spread across his face as he pointed at her. Found you, Muen. But something was off. Muen didn't move. She stood still, her small hands gripping the stone pillar tightly. Her gaze remained fixed on him, as if she hadn't heard him at all. Leon's smile faltered, confusion knitting his brow. He studied her more closely, noticing her uncharacteristic silence. What's going on? He muttered to himself. Is she... angry? The playful atmosphere shifted as he took a cautious step closer, uncertain of what had caused the sudden change in her demeanor. Leon let out an awkward chuckle, trying to ease the tension. Muen, sorry to keep you waiting. I... He paused, feeling a bead of sweat trickle down his temple. But before he could finish, Muen suddenly turned and bolted away without a word. His eyes widened in surprise. Muen, wait! He called out, instinctively stretching out his hand as if he could somehow pull her back. Without hesitating, he took off after her, his feet pounding against the garden's soft earth. But Muen was quick. In a matter of seconds, she darted to the right, disappearing behind the towering trees and hedges that framed the lush garden. Leon's heart pounded in his chest, his breath quickening as he called after her. Why are you running, Muen? The sound of her small footsteps faded, leaving Leon standing still, unsure of why she had fled. As he turned the corner, he was startled to find nothing but an empty path. Confusion set in. He was sure he had seen her dart this way just moments ago. His head swayed from left to right, scanning the area. It's impossible to predict a child's mood, he thought with an inward sigh. He slowed to a stop, rubbing the back of his head in frustration. No wonder Ross Weissa gave me the job of taking care of the baby, he muttered, chuckling at the irony. Unbeknownst to him, just a few feet away, a small figure watched with tightly clenched fists. Muen stood hidden, her eyes sparkling with mischief. Then, with a burst of energy, she ran up behind Leon and threw her arms around him in a surprise embrace. Dad, Muen caught you, she said enthusiastically, her voice ringing with triumph. 
Leon, startled by her sudden presence, turned to see his daughter beaming up at him. His brow furrowed in confusion. Muen, didn't you just run past me? He asked, his voice tinged with surprise. Muen looked up at him, her eyes wide and innocent. No, Dad couldn't find Muen, so Muen came out to look for Dad, she replied, her voice filled with genuine confusion. Leon's eyes widened in disbelief. Just a moment ago, he had been certain she was upset, her demeanor cold and distant. Yet here she was, cheerful and affectionate, as if nothing had happened. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, but her innocent expression made him hesitate. Before he could dwell on it further, Muen tugged at his hand, urging him forward. Come on, Dad. I have something to show you, she said excitedly. Leon, still puzzled, let her lead the way. As they walked together, his mind raced to make sense of the sudden shift in her behavior. But as they moved farther into the garden, someone was watching them. A few feet away, hidden behind a tree, stood another figure, the real Muen. Her dragon tail was raised slightly, her small hands clenched into fists, and her ocean blue eyes fixated on Leon. A deep frown darkened her face as she watched him from the shadows, her expression filled with hurt and confusion. In a secluded corner of the Dragon Queen's castle, there stood a grand water fountain. Its walls were adorned with intricate golden statues that gently poured streams of water, creating a soft melody that filled the serene space. The sunlight danced on the surface of the water, casting a warm glow over everything. Leon sat on the fountain's stone bench, his eyes quietly observing Muen as she focused on her drawing. In her small hands, she clutched a crayon, carefully sketching a picture of her family. The sight of her innocence, so absorbed in her world, tugged at his heart. A soft smile tugged at Leon's lips. It's good to have a daughter, he mused, watching her with a sense of warmth and peace. It feels like my soul is healed. Despite the horrors of his situation, being a father to Muen brought him a profound sense of joy and comfort a light in the darkness that surrounded him. 
but beneath his calm exterior, something darker stirred. Leon's hand clenched into a tight fist, his knuckles white with tension. Sooner or later, Dad will help you escape from the clutches of your mother, he vowed silently to himself, his resolve hardening with each passing second. His thoughts were a whirlwind of planning and desperation. Rossweisa may be a powerful dragon queen, but he couldn't let his daughter live under her shadow forever. Muen, oblivious to her father's inner turmoil, lifted her drawing and beamed with pride. Muen came rushing over, clutching a white piece of paper in her tiny hands, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Dad, look, Muen drew a family portrait. Her voice was filled with pride as she held the drawing up for him to see. Leon smiled warmly, stretching out his hand to take the paper. Muen is awesome, he praised her, his voice full of affection. You're definitely worthy of being your daddy's daughter. Muen's eyes glittered with joy as she watched her father examine the drawing. Leon's gaze fell upon the figures, himself and Rossweisa holding hands with two smaller figures beneath them. One was unmistakably Muen, but the second figure caught his attention. His brow furrowed slightly as he lifted the drawing closer to his face, inspecting it with curiosity. Muen, Leon began, pointing at the second child in the picture. Why are there two kids here? Who is this? His voice held a note of confusion. Muen's face lit up even more, her excitement bubbling over. That's my twin sister, she exclaimed, her voice bright and innocent, as though it was the most obvious thing in the world. Leon's heart skipped a beat. He hadn't been aware that Muen had a sister. The revelation hit him like a wave. I didn't just hit the target once, I hit it twice. The realization washed over him, and he ran a hand through his hair, ruffling it in disbelief. He muttered to himself, piecing it all together. The child I saw in the garden just now, it must have been her. I called her by the wrong name. No wonder she was angry. Muen lifted her head, her innocent eyes reflecting her inner certainty. Muen thinks that sister isn't angry. She's just a little shy when she saw dad, she said her tone filled with a firm conviction far beyond her years. Leon paused, considering her words. He lifted his gaze toward the towering silver castle, its grandeur looming over them like a silent witness to all that had been hidden. They haven't spent much time together, he thought, so it makes sense that they're not familiar with each other yet. His expression hardened as he turned his thoughts inward. It's all the dragon's fault for hiding this child from me. He muttered under his breath, his eyes narrowing. The weight of Rossweiss's secrecy hung heavily in the air. I need to confront her and get the truth. Meanwhile, in Rossweiss's study, a small red dragon, no larger than a pigeon, perched on her desk. The creature growled softly, its wings flicking as it waited for her to acknowledge it. This particular dragon was a messenger subspecies, used to carry messages across vast distances between races, known simply as the messenger dragon. Tied to the dragon's back was a small bamboo tube wrapped neatly with a red ribbon. With a graceful motion, Rossweiss untied the ribbon, carefully pulling the bamboo tube from the dragon's back. She opened it and a single letter slid out into her hand. Her eyes scanned the paper, reading the first few lines. Immediately, a frown crossed her otherwise calm face. Why does my sister have to visit at this particular time? She murmured to herself, the edge in her voice betraying her irritation. The red dragon shifted its weight slightly, waiting in silence as Rossweiss sat still, deep in thought. Rossweiss's thoughts were abruptly interrupted by a loud resounding thud from the far corner of her room. Both she and the small red dragon turned their heads in unison, their eyes fixed on the door. Without warning, the door slammed open, rattling on its hinges. Leon stormed into the room, his face set with anger. Ross Weissa, he shouted, his voice brimming with frustration. The small red dragon perched on a wooden stick, startled by the sudden intrusion, flinched, its wings twitching in surprise. It glanced nervously between Leon and Ross Weissa, unsure of what would unfold. Rossweiss, however, remained unfazed. 
Her gaze didn't leave the letter in her hands as she calmly asked, Where is Muen? Her voice was indifferent, cold, as though Leon's anger was beneath her notice. She hadn't even glanced his way, as if his presence wasn't worth acknowledging. The air in the room felt tense, charged with the unspoken confrontation between them. Leon strode purposefully towards Rossweiss's desk, his arms stretched out in frustration. She went to play with her sister, he said, his voice strained. You're really good at hiding things. When were you planning on telling me I have an older daughter? Rossweiser remained calm, her movements deliberate as she placed the letter from her sister neatly on the desk. Without haste, she crossed her arms and stared at Leon, her expression unreadable for a long, tense moment. Then, with a slight tilt of her head, a mocking smile curled at the edges of her lips. Don't you already know by now? Her tone dripped with sarcasm. The question meant more to ridicule than to inform. Her indifference only stoked Leon's frustration, his pulse quickening as he stood before her, the weight of her hidden truths pressing on his chest. Rossweiser, as always, maintained the upper hand, her icy demeanor unshaken by his fury. Leon had hoped that revealing her secret would provoke some kind of reaction, but it only seemed to harden her indifference. Frustrated, he slammed his hand down on Rossweiss's desk, the sound echoing through the room. I have to thank you, he said mockingly, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Giving birth to a child is hard work. I didn't expect you gave birth to two for me. You've really outdone yourself, Leon pressed on, desperate for a crack in her icy facade. When I return to the Empire someday, I'll be sure to write your name in our family tree, Rossweiser. That did it. Her serene smile faltered, replaced with a flicker of annoyance. Her brows furrowed and her eyes sharpened, though she quickly masked the shift in her demeanor. In one smooth motion, she leaned back in her chair, her expression now calm, almost amused. Do you know why I didn't tell you about the existence of our eldest daughter? Rossweiser asked, her voice dripping with amusement, a knowing smile curving at the corners of her lips. Leon straightened up, folding his arms across his chest, his eyes narrowing in suspicion. Why? he asked, his tone brimming with frustration. I think you're jealous of how close I am to Muen, so you've been keeping Noah from me. You don't want her to know who her father really is. At the mention of Noah's name, Rossweiss's smile grew. It was a dangerous smile, one that made Leon's gut tighten. Rossweiser maintained her relaxed demeanor, her eyes never wavering as she watched Leon with an almost predatory gaze. Are you so eager to see her? She asked, her voice steady, not giving him an inch of ground. She was determined not to let him win this conversation. Leon's brow twitched, her calm composure only furthering his irritation. Nonsense, he shot back, trying to mask his frustration. Who doesn't want to meet their daughter? I'm not like you cold, stern, always keeping people at a distance. I want to build a real relationship with her, not raise her like some warrior without feelings. Rossweiss's lips curled into a smirk as she leaned forward, resting her elbow on the desk. She casually propped her head on her hand, her eyes locking onto Leon's with a look that unnerved him. Oh, she drawled, a hint of amusement dancing in her tone. Don't regret it then. Her smirk widened. She knew exactly what Noah felt about her father, and the subtle shift in her expression told Leon that whatever lay ahead, he wasn't fully prepared for it. The scene shifted to the sunlit kitchen of the Dragon Queen's castle, where golden rays poured through the windows, bathing the room in a warm, inviting glow. Leon stood at the counter, a devilish grin playing on his lips as he grasped a kitchen knife in one hand, calling out Rossweiss's name, though more for effect than anything. Around his waist, he wore a short black apron, a somewhat comical contrast to the determined glint in his eyes. He began chopping carrots on the wooden cutting board with a rhythmic, deliberate motion, his grin never faltering. This was his plan, his first step in getting closer to Noah. If he could win her over with food, he thought, he could break through the icy wall she had likely built around herself. The smell of cream stew, his specialty, began to fill the room. 
Leon had often made it for his old party members, each one of them praising its rich, sweet taste. It was a comforting dish, the kind of meal that warmed you from the inside, and he was convinced it was perfect for Noah, his daughter, who likely didn't know how to accept him yet. As he poured the hot stew into a wooden cooker, Leon lifted a silver ladle and brought it to his nose, inhaling the fragrant aroma. His grin softened into a smile, proud of his handiwork. Not bad, he muttered, complimenting himself. Even after two years of being asleep, his cooking skills hadn't grown rusty. Leon's mind wandered as he imagined Noah's reaction to the stew. He could see it vividly, her eyes widening in surprise, hands clenched in excitement, looking up at him with admiration, the same way Muen did. The thought filled him with satisfaction. This taste will definitely win Noah over, he whispered to himself, his excitement growing with each passing minute. Unbeknownst to Leon, two maids had been quietly observing him through the kitchen window, their smiles growing as they watched him work. One of the maids, her eyes wide in admiration, clasped her hands together, unable to hide her thoughts. He's just recovered from a serious illness, and yet here he is, cooking for his family. He's such a good male dragon, she said softly, though the last part came out as a whisper. Her companion, a maid with one eye partially covered by her hair, looked at her with mild confusion. Their quiet conversation was cut short by the sound of approaching footsteps. The maids turned their heads and immediately straightened, bowing their heads in unison. Her Majesty, they greeted, their voices soft but reverent. Rosweisa walked through the hallway, one hand holding Muen's and the other gripping Noah's. The two girls, each resembling their mother in striking ways, stood on either side of her. You don't have to stay for dinner tonight. Go and rest, Rosweisa commanded, her tone cool but not unkind as she dismissed the maids. The two women exchanged quick glances, grateful for the unexpected reprieve. Thank you, your majesty, they replied in unison, bowing once more before scurrying off, leaving Leon to face the queen and their two daughters. As they entered the kitchen, Leon turned toward the door, proudly holding the steaming pot of stew. You guys came just in time, he said with a grin, having just finished setting the table. Muen's face lit up at the sight of her father. However, Noah remained by Rosweiss's side, clutching her mother's leg, half hidden from view. Rosweiss let go of Muen's hand, and the little girl darted toward Leon, her eyes bright with excitement. Daddy, it smells so good, she exclaimed, her nose twitching as the rich aroma of the stew filled the air. Leon beamed at her compliment. He knew both his daughters loved meat, so he'd made sure to prepare a hearty stew and steak, hoping it would win over both girls. But as his eyes shifted to Noah, his heart beat a little faster with anticipation. He expected her to be impressed, maybe even excited, just as Muen had been. His smile widened with satisfaction, already imagining her shy smile breaking through. Yet Noah's response was far from what he had hoped. She averted her gaze, her face stoic, seemingly uninterested in the food or him. The confident smile that had lit up Leon's face wavered, then crumbled. He stood there for a moment, his chest tightening. Lifting his head, Leon sighed, closing his eyes as disappointment washed over him. He had imagined this moment differently. He had hoped his cooking and cheerful smile would melt Noah's icy demeanor. But instead, he found himself standing there, feeling as if the gap between him and his eldest daughter was even wider than before. Rosweiss stood with her arms crossed, a self-satisfied smile curving her lips. She had anticipated this moment, knowing all too well Noah's feelings toward her father. This cunning dragon had orchestrated this meeting perfectly, Leon thought bitterly, clenching his teeth. No wonder she kept Noah away from me for so long. Breaking the tension, Rosweiss crouched down beside Noah, her tone soft but commanding. This is your first formal meeting with your father. Introduce yourself properly, she instructed, gently placing a reassuring hand on Noah's back. Noah looked up at her mother, eyes wide but determined. Yes, mother, she responded obediently before turning toward Leon. 
With a small but confident stride, Noah approached him, her hand resting on her hip as if mimicking her mother's poised demeanor. I am Noah Melkvi, the eldest daughter of the Silver Dragon Queen, Rosweisa, she declared, her voice steady despite her young age. I am one year and two months old. The statement hung in the air, carrying more weight than her small frame suggested. Though barely a toddler by human standards, Noah's dragon heritage meant she matured rapidly, both physically and emotionally. Her confidence was unmistakable, a reminder of her powerful lineage. Leon watched her, feeling the divide between them deepen as the little dragon stood before him, more composed than he had expected. Leon crouched down to Noah's eye level, a playful smile lighting up his face as he tried to bridge the gap between them. Hello, Noah, he said warmly, extending his hand toward her. My name is Leon Cosmode, and I'm your father. His voice was gentle, filled with hope that this introduction would mark the beginning of their bond. But Noah's gaze remained fixed and neutral, her small figure unmoved by his warmth. She stared back at him, her expression unreadable, as though assessing him from a distance that wasn't physical but emotional. Leon's heart sank slightly. He had imagined this moment playing out so differently, the warmth of reunion, the joy of a daughter meeting her father for the first time. But Noah's indifference was palpable, like a cold wind brushing past him. She didn't move to take his hand. Instead, she simply observed him with a gaze that betrayed no excitement, no eagerness to connect. A bead of sweat trickled down Leon's cheek, and he closed his eyes for a brief moment, hiding his growing unease. Why is she being so cold? He wondered, his mind racing. He had been absent for two years, but surely she didn't understand the full weight of his disappearance. Yet her distance cut through him, deeper than he expected. Noah, his eldest daughter, was a stranger one whose feelings toward him were as enigmatic as her mother's smile. Muen darted to her sister's side, her innocent energy cutting through the awkward tension that had settled between Noah and Leon. Sister, please talk more, she pleaded, her voice soft and sincere as she tugged at Noah's arm. Don't embarrass Dad. Noah, however, was unmoved. She stepped away from Muen, her tiny frame rigid as she crossed her arms in a gesture that mirrored their mother's commanding stance. Her eyes narrowed slightly, and with a tone far beyond her years, she retorted, But he looks so weak. Is he really our father? The words hit Leon like a blade, sharp and merciless, slicing through the fragile hope he had held onto. His chest tightened as if Noah's remark had reached deep inside him, testing his resolve. He instinctively grabbed the fabric of his white shirt, his knuckles whitening as he held it. Her cold gaze, so much like Rossweiss's, pierced him, leaving no doubt that his eldest daughter had inherited not only her mother's sharp tongue, but also her formidable spirit. But Leon didn't waver. Behind the hurt, his eyes burned with determination. He studied Noah, recognizing her stubbornness, just like her mother. If winning her over was going to be a challenge, then so be it. He wasn't going to back down, not now, not ever. I'll prove it, he thought to himself. Weakness isn't something they'll see in me again.